Have you ever wondered what makes Salesforce development different from other types of development? Ever wonder what tools are built into the platform to help you with your development? In this video, Suzanne Abram is discussing what you need to know that will help you become a successful Apex developer. Welcome, it's Rachel and Jessica from 100 Days at Trailhead, the place where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, have fun, and invest in ourselves. Whether you are brand new to learning Salesforce and starting from the beginning, or mid-career and skilling up for that new opportunity, we are your trail guides here to support you with an itinerary to help you get where you're going. You are in the right place. If you are new to our channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can be notified when we release a new video. In the description below, you can find links on everything we mention in this video in addition to links we find helpful like books that have helped us and our friends along our tech and Salesforce journeys. To find other helpful Salesforce and tech content, visit our blog at 100daysoftrailhead.com. In this video, Suzanne Abram will discuss what developers need to know about the Salesforce platform. Suzanne is a tech lead at a Salesforce consulting company whose work involves coordinating a team of developers. She holds late night and early meetings only when substantial amounts of coffee are present. Your quest, should you choose to take it, is to journey with us through the adventure of learning about developing on the Salesforce platform. Your quest begins now. Hi, my name is Suzanne Abram. I'm a Salesforce dev and I'm here to talk to you about five things every Salesforce dev should know. Okay, so I'll start out with the obvious. All Salesforce developers should know their tools. This includes both the coding languages commonly used in a Salesforce environment and the low code or the declarative tools. You're never going to know them all perfectly, but that's okay because no one else will either. In addition to knowing code and knowing declarative tools, a Salesforce dev should know other tools that tend to get used frequently in Salesforce development. A dev needs to have an IDE for code writing, such as VS Code. A dev may use a command line interface tool to push code from one environment to another. A dev may have to communicate remotely with others over Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Chat or Slack. A dev may work from a flow diagram built in Lucidchart. A dev team may want to track its work with project management software, such as Jira or Trello. A team may use agile methodology or scrum methods. And so a Salesforce dev ought to have at least a basic familiarity with all of these. You don't have to be an expert in all of them, but you should be aware that these are tools you're going to be working with, just as much as code. Next up, all Salesforce devs should know the order of execution. Uh, the Salesforce order of execution is the order in which each piece of automation will be executed when you save a record. There's 22 steps in the order of execution, and some of them can execute twice. You need to know the order of execution because sometimes you'll have multiple pieces of automation, and they won't do what you expected them to do because you expected them to execute as, say, a, B, C, D, and instead they're executing as D, A, C, B. So memorize the order of execution if you can and save it as a bookmark if you can't. Third on the list is knowing what you should not be doing as a Salesforce dev. As a good dev, you probably want to jump in and offer a solution, but something every dev should know is when the problem is best handled by someone else. This could include calling in an architect or a subject matter expert. Sometimes a solution involves trade-offs, and maybe the dev's job should just be to lay out the options and let the business owner decide. For example, deciding when to use code and when to use flow involves trade-offs because the flow can be updated by an administrator who can't rewrite your code. But your code could handle a bulk job better and work better with other code that already exists in the org. Before you rush in to fix the situation, there are times you should step back and say that other people should have input into how the situation should be fixed. 
This is especially true if you're working as part of a team. The fourth thing a dev should know is one of the biggest ones, and unfortunately it's one the trailhead doesn't teach you very much about. If you've been on Trailhead for much time, you'll know that Trailhead is always showing you how you can succeed. And that's great, except it means Trailhead doesn't put an equal amount of time into teaching you how to pull yourself out of a situation when you failed. So what do you do when your code doesn't work? You need to know how to debug. And I'll say this again, you really, really need to know how to debug your code. There are a lot of debugging tools out there, and you need to get practice using them. At a minimum, you need to know about debug logs and execution logs and filters and trace flags in Developer Console. You need to know about the developer tools in Google Chrome. You need to know about breakpoints and the other tools that are available in VS Code. You need to know the difference between a runtime error and a compile time error and a syntax error and how to spot each one of them. You need to know how to write try-catch statements. You need to know how to use Google or the search engine of your choice to look up an error message. I can't emphasize enough that you can solve a lot of your own problems if you just know what part of the error message you're most likely to get a hit on when you search online. And again, Trailhead wants you to feel successful, so it tends to create coding situations where you can't go too far wrong. And that's great as far as it goes, but it means you're not learning the valuable skill of figuring how to rescue yourself when you do go way off track. So if you haven't learned how to do that yet, it may be the very best thing you can spend your time on. Learn how to clean up your own coding messes. This can include knowing when to ask other people for help. And last, when you write code, you're not going to be writing it in production. As a good dev, you know better than to write code in production. You may write it in a sandbox and use change sets to deploy to production, or you may use scratch orgs and DX, or you may use your own development environment and Git and a CLI. Um, there are lots of different ways to get your code from the place you built it to the place where it's ultimately going to go for users to use. You should be aware that just because your code works properly in the environment where you built it doesn't mean that your deployment is going to be smooth and uneventful. There are entire books written on the issues that can arise when you deploy what you've built from one environment to another. Good devs will spend some time figuring out all the things that can go wrong and preparing for them. And if you don't have any experience in this yet, one of the first and best things that you can do is to give yourself time to handle all the things that can go wrong. You should be aware that your code can pass unit tests in a sandbox but fail the same tests when you try to deploy. In fact, your entire build in a sandbox may be working perfectly but may run into multiple issues taking hours or days to fix when you try to deploy to production. If you're using change sets, make sure to validate well before you try to deploy. So to wrap up, keep on learning and have a great time with your Salesforce future. And with that, we're at the end. Did you know all these tools were available to help you? If not, what did you learn? Do you have any additional tips that you would like to share with others? Comment below. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, here's a bonus. You'll learn more as a developer if you study a bit every day for a month than if you try to dump everything about Apex into your head in half a week. Thank you for spending time with us. Make sure you like this video. It helps a lot. Click subscribe and on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on Instagram, Twitter, and on our website at 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.